Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and picking up where we left off in the last video where we unboxed the Cool Engine or Cool Engine P2X, formerly known as the Super Scalar K10 Plus. Uh, well, we gotta get it powered up. All right, so right here we have my S19K Pros and I'm just gonna put it to the side of that so that way we can connect to the PDU, which I have enough power for. Here's the power supply and the goal is to get it powered up try to connect to it over the network and see what the base overview of this particular device is. It looks like an ASIC, but it's really an FPGA, a little bit more complicated, not as far as getting it connected, powered on, all that stuff. It's similar to an ASIC as far as that goes, but as far as managing it or maybe applying different bit streams, that might be a little bit more complicated, but we'll dive into that in a future video, if not this one. Right now, first things first, it looks like we got a bunch of six pins here that we, we got to connect up and the short the cables aren't that long so I couldn't just let it sit, the power supply sit down here because it wouldn't reach the uh, multiple six pins back there. So I might need to figure out a way to elevate it. And then we have one red uh, six pin cable that looks like it goes to the control board because we do have one connection right here. And I have a network cable that I need to run and then we need to go find it on the network. So right now I need to figure out what's the best way. I don't want to leave it on top of my immersion setup I want to elevate the power supply somewhere uh, here, so let me figure that out real quick. And then Today's video is brought to you courtesy of JingleMining.com, one of the leading crypto hardware vendors out there, providing you products ranging from the Jazz Miner to the Bitmain Ant Miners, as well as the Cool Engine P2. You can help support this channel by supporting its sponsors. Link is in the description. All right, we got everything plugged in. Not exactly the most efficient setup here in my garage, but control board, all six pins are plugged in. This power supply does have a power on and off switch. And we got a little short run running right here to connect to the PDUs. Now just need to plug in the ethernet cable and we should be good to go and just need to find it on the network. So let's power this bad boy up. Just wanna make sure everything is good. Power supply is spinning up. The lights, like I said, the little LEDs on this machine are a little bit off center. They're not directly in front. So just a matter of now connecting to it, we're getting lights on the board. That's good. All three boards are showing up as it's supposed to. Power supply is blowing some good air. Ooh, there you go. There's the fans, there's the fans. Make sure there's nothing loose around here. Some old brake pads and brake rotors. Man, that bad boy is loud. You can hear it ramping up. So let's go switch over to the computer now. All right, so we made it over to the computer in a combination of using my router or angry IP scanner, or whatever tool you, you like to identify the IP of the machine, uh, we were able to access it. But you can't access it directly. Once you identify the IP of the machine, you're gonna have to use the tool provided to them or to us by Jingle Mining. And I will have links in the description down to them as well as their uh, firmware guide and manual which they do have an english manual but the tool itself called the p2 tool is in all chinese so in combination with google lens and just looking at what i'm seeing in front of me trying to do my best to navigate it uh we are able to discern what's what hopefully jingle mining will have an update um and the p2 tool will be have an english version and a chinese version or one that can be switched but we'll see uh, but I did get a good tip from Crypto Mikel, who sent me the K10 tool or whatever this management tool for the K10, K9, so on and so forth. So we could see some of the buttons are very similar. And I would urge you to pause this video and look at the, the buttons are the same. Uh, it's just you have it down here in English and then you have it up here in Chinese, just so that way you can it can help you navigate. But the first step that we need to do um is identify the ip of the machine which we did and now we got to tell the program because we can see it right now but we didn't see it at the start to do that first things first we want to go to ip change now this is the third tab at the top so right here and then this is translating to the ip address uh basically the starting ip address of your network or your subnet and then this third one over here is the IP address of your gateway. Once you have both of those set, you hit this button 
a window pops up, you click OK, a third window pops up, and you're going to click the button in the bottom right again. Once you do that, now you can go back here, and then you can scan for devices. And it's the second button, scan machine, so this one right here. Once you have scan machine and you see it showing up, you're going to select it and you can do start status or stop status. Start status just tells us the metrics, right? So we'll be able to see the hash rate, the worker name, the address, the temperature, all that good stuff right now. And if we scroll over to the right, we will be able to see the algorithm that it's on. By default, it may come on whatever algorithm. We're going to leave it on Carlson hash for this video. Uh, and we'll talk about switching the algorithm in a separate video. But right now we could see that it's hashing away. And originally it was hashing away, but just not on my wallet address. To change the wallet address, which is step two, we now need to go to pull set, which is the last one. If you're using the Chinese version, it's the last tab in the top right. So this one right here. And you got different options in the drop down for algo. Radiant, Alpheum, Blake 3, or Ironfish, which should be changing in the future. Uh, if it's not already by the time this video comes out, Carlson and Caspa. And here in the far left, we want to set the pool, and then we want to set your wallet address or sub account. So if you're using, for example, a Brains account, maybe it might be X Bitcoin dot whatever your username is. But there's three default parameters, and this is important: default fish and 666 pool. You might have to change it based upon the pool and they have some parameters or they got some guides here that we can do and let me just read this to you real quick so when you set your address or your, your wallet address or sub account um don't add anything extra do not set the worker name in this box by default the worker is configured as the current miner's ip address right and for example if the IP address is 192.168.99.34, the corresponding worker ID will be the last uh, section of that IP address. So 099.034 or other specified worker configurations will not work. Other specified configurations is not supported. And they have a few recommendations here. For example, Alpheum mining on hero miners rather than use Alpheum.hero miners or Alpheum.us.hero miners. It is actually the IP address. So I wanted to use Unminable, right? Unminable has Carlson hash dot unminable dot com. And they don't want that. They want the IP address colon the port number. So you go to what's uh, what's my IP dot org. You click on who is DNS right here. And if we do a reverse lookup of Carlson hash dot unminable dot com, we get this IP address, which is currently plugged in and colon three, 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 three. And we are now connected to the unminable pool. Uh, and I don't have my referral in there, unfortunately. When I had the referral in there, I think it was tripping up something. Um, and you can see some of the pool set that I had. So originally I had the referral and it just it would not take it. So I took it off. So now I, I'm not saving a little bit. And if you use my referral code on unminable Serpent X, you could save 0.25 on your, your mining fees. Uh, it's just for this miner, it just seemed to be tripping it up according to this guide. Now that might change in the future, but we have to see, for example, moving on to um, you know other pools like hash hashpool.space, they have rxd.shpool.site and then a port and then F2 pool instead of having the F2 pool uh, server URL, the, no, the normal name, they have the IP address. So stratum plus TCP colon slash slash the IP address, do a reverse lookup of the pool you want, colon and the port number. And you can see the pool parameter changes based upon the pool. Right now, I am able to mine with unminable using the default pool parameter. So if you want to copy this setup, it's just the port at the IP address that I found with reverse lookup. Uh, then my wallet address and no dot worker name hashtag serpent X unfortunately pool parameter default and we are connected to the pool you can see the worker connected right here and it's using the name the, the worker name of my local IP address of this particular device but we are connected now just to set the pool parameters or whatever pool you want you got three pools. The other two are optional, but go ahead and set some backups. Um, 
use the IP address again, set your worker name, what pool parameter that is supported. If default isn't working, change to fish or 666 pool. And you need to select the minor right here on the right and then click start set. When you hit start set, another window will pop up. You hit OK. And then you can read parameters and it will output a message down here if you changed anything. And you can see where we changed from Carlson hash dot unminable to our IP address. So we're good there. And then you go to the machine info. You're going to select your miner, stop status, wait a little bit, and start status. And what's going to happen is instead of showing information here, it's going to change from minor state from mining to loading. Give it about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, but it will get done. And eventually you'll start to see your worker name and information, hash rate, so on and so forth, average temperatures. And if you double click on the address, there's a button down here that will load in just a second to where we can see the average chip temperatures as well. This button in the bottom left, there you go. We can see some additional information like the temperatures, clocks, so on and so Wait. forth. As I mentioned before, we will probably look at the algo change, but let's just look at some basics, right? So each tab corresponds at the top here, system command in Chinese, can't really see much in there. I'll play around with that later. IP change, I just showed you that at the beginning to identify or set up the IP of the machine. The update and sets probably where you're going to spend most of your time besides the pool set. And here we can change the algorithm. Now, according to the Jingle Mining uh, information, we have the P2X and the P2G. We have the X version. You might have the G. Make sure you're downloading the right firmware for your device. But with this tool, we can browse and select the firmware or image for whatever we want we have alpha and we got blade 3 we got kls for carlson and radiant those are our different ones we go into that folder we select the image and now we can algorithm burn onto this machine again we'll go in greater detail in a separate video there's also raspberry pi firmware update single file update we can set an adaptive frequency ranging from 100 to 400 a non-adaptive frequency ranging from the same numbers 100 to 400 we can set a fixed fan speed going from a thousand to seven thousand rpm depending on your thermals we could set or play around with the auto adjust fan speed we have voltages right here we got chip uh temp limit or upper limit we got power temp limit uh current protection threshold whatever it might be we can set uh the parameter whatever it might be ideal um temp where we want to sit, what's our ideal temperature, and our chip frequency ranging from all the way from 63 all the way to 744. Obviously, uh, be careful. This is an FPGA. You break it. You already bought it, but you break it. Um, getting a repair for this type of device could be a pain. Now, again, this is the K10 tool, not the P2 tool. While they look the same, uh, I wouldn't go flashing anything in it. I, I don't think it really matters. But I'm not going to play around with it. I'm just using this to help me translate. And then I'm doing all my actions on this guy right here. To see, I'll have everything linked down in the description. Please go check out JingleMind.com, sponsor of today's video. And I appreciate you. Hopefully this helps you get up and running. And stay tuned for more detailed uh, videos like algo changing that we might do in the future. But on the way out, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Make sure you get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. So we'll check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and our sponsors. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.